Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got a lot of stuff to go over and it's gonna get deep. So first up, Santiment put out a blockbuster of a report which talks about Bitcoin whales and hodlers. And it's gonna tell us the number one strategy to use against all these whales. And the thing about this report, it states that there are way more whales out there than previously thought. Also, talk about the new darling of the crypto industry is Polkadot on the brink of becoming the first Ethereum bridge. This one's pretty interesting because it talks about how not only Polkadot is what it's doing right now, but how it's going to get better within the next four months. And finally, after recent pullback, the next stop for Ethereum price is a new all-time highs, says Weiss Ratings. And I'm always skeptical about Weiss, but they actually called the pullback and they're talking about a realistic number as far as Ethereum. And that'll lead us to Q and C of the day, which we'll talk about in just a bit. But first, let's take a look what's going on with the market. So today is Friday, August 28th. It is 2 o'clock p.m. I got to get this uh, video out so I can uh, get out of the house and do more things. <laughs> so here's what's going on. First of all, looking pretty good day. So we got Bitcoin pushing past 11.5. Pretty happy about that. 2.2% up. Fantastic. Ethereum is almost hitting that $400 mark, which I always talk about. I think that's the level of resistance and support. So we'll see how it all works. But it's up 5% for the day, which is fantastic. Tether and XRP, the two stable coins, watch out. Chainlink, uh, not too bad, 1526, it's up 5.7%. And I gotta tell you, um, I gotta tell you, Chainlink is uh, just one of those things that just refuses to go down. It just kind of keeps, uh, you know, keeping its head above water, keeping its head above water, keeping its head above water. So I like to see big things and uh, I think it's gonna happen. Polkadot up 12% for the day. Unbelievable. 12%. It's at $6.28. And I told you, I, I hate to say, I, I, I don't want I say it. I told you, but remember uh, a couple days ago, I said, hey, don't, you know, don't FOMO into uh, Polkadot and, and put all your money into it. And because uh, it took a big a bit of a dip and it, and it went down a little bit yesterday. I mean, you could have picked it up for a fantastic price. And then right now, here we are at 628. And I got and after we go over today's report, you're going to see why this thing's going to be big. Bitcoin Cash up. Fantastic. Like I don't own Bitcoin Cash or Litecoin. Definitely not Bitcoin SV. Duo Cardano is up 3.2. It's at 10, 10 cents. Pretty like that's good. Binance Coin Crypto. What's up? EOS. Wow, I own that. But uh, yeah, EOS is EOS. Cosmos, geez, everything's up today. I like to see that, 12.3. There's one called UMA. And I was on Alex Maschioli's show today and uh, we were talking about this one. It came out of nowhere. And I just asked a question because Alex is the big institutional guy and we had CJ on from uh, Market Rebellion, who's a, who's a TA guy. I'm like, where'd this come from? I mean, seriously, does anybody know about this? They're like, you know what? It's just gotta be an inside thing because I mean, no one knew about this, not even these guys. So I'm like, Come on, whatever. But 36%, 58% for the week, UMA, I don't know. If you got some information about that, drop in the comment section. Let's get uh, on to the base stories. First up, this was fascinating. This was fascinating. And that's what I've been talking about this channel for a very long time. So this is by Santiment. If you don't know Santiment, it's a data and, and analytics platform and it helps traders become better traders just by giving them the best information that's out there. They put a lot of time and effort into it and, they've, and I've uh, done some of their stuff before, uh, their different uh, cases, and they seem to be on point. So when I saw this, I'm like, oh, this ought to be good. Bitcoin whales and holders. So what the heck is going on here? So to make it very simple, they just pretty much lay out exactly what we've all known is that whales control everything. And here's the data. Out of 855 assets that we track on-chain data for, 727 have greater than 50% of their total supply located in the top 100 addresses. That is hilarious. For the time being, crypto can only promise the decentralization of their network not of their supply. So everybody who's talking about, well, this project sucks because it's all, you know, it's so centralized and this project is awful because it's so centralized. Well, here's the thing. Everybody's centralized right now. Now, do I think that is going to continue for the for the long term? No, I think whales can only be around for so long. I mean, this is a very small market. I mean, we're under 300 billion, which sounds like a lot, but it's not. I mean, if you look at like, I mean, the, the market cap of gold, gold, is eight trillion. Um, the market cap of the entire stock market is like 89 trillion or something. It's just ridiculous. So we're talking about 300 billion. It's a drop in the bucket. And that's why these whales can do all these things. And uh, they're making a killing right now off us. But as time goes on, even whales got to sell. And 
the more that we stay in this, the more strong hands that we have, then we become the controlling aspect of the whole market. The thing is, just have some strong hands. Don't be like Portney over there at Barstool Sports, who just got out, you know, lickety split because he had weak hands. Sorry, he did. So be the strong hand of player, hodl, and just hang on. Because as time goes on, those whales are to sell. You and me, we pick up all those little scraps and a little bit of scraps equal up to a complete meal. So that's what I think is going to happen over time. They can't hold it forever. And that's why I'm here. Well, that's why me and you were here. So it says again, Bitcoin supply is dominated by whales. Look at this. 85% of the total supply of Bitcoin is found in addresses owning more than 10 Bitcoin, which isn't that much, right? You think, well, 10 Bitcoin, but that's still 113,000. 61% of Bitcoin total supply is currently in the hands, the hand of Bitcoin millionaires owning up 100 plus Bitcoin. And then the top five altcoins are no different. So don't sit there all smug and be like, well, mine's awesome. No, it's not. So ETH holder distri distribution, 80% the total supply are held by addresses with more than 1,000 ETH, which is, you know, almost half a million dollars. And then Link, which everybody talks about, same thing. 94.6% held by addresses with more than 10,000 link. And XRP, everybody's favorite who likes to bag on, even me sometimes, even though I hold it, I, I will never let it go because I'm so stubborn. 95.4% held by addresses with more than 10 million XRP, which we kind of knew that, right? So when we take a look at all these different altcoins, and just, just to reiterate, just to reiterate, 727 of the top assets have more than 50% of their total supply in the top 100 addresses. So just let that sink in again. So don't be high and mighty. It happens across the board. So let's move down, move down, moving down. And this is what I'm talking about. Whales have to sell and we'll pick up the scraps. The amount of Bitcoin held by small investors has more than doubled in the past five years. Bitcoin well held holdings have declined by a similar margin during this time, supply owned by addresses with less than 10 has grown from 6% to 14% since August 15th. That's me and you. We're doing great things just by having strong hands. Retail sector growth will be key for Bitcoin again a foothold in the global financial system. And I totally believe that. I have more faith in me and you than I do in those whales. I'll tell you that right now. Moving down, Bitcoin price actions relying on whale loyalty. Idle Bitcoin activity points to ongoing accumulation. 65% of all Bitcoin has not moved in the last year. This marks an all-time low in Bitcoin's yearly circulation. People are accumulating. Price will go up. Hope to see fireworks. Hoping for 100K by 2021. We'll see. Going down, going down. And then talks about median age and decisive zone. I will link this <clears throat> in the description. But it's actually... I actually do my do my best, but it's actually uh, it was sent to me via email, so I probably can't. But let me uh, I'll just link the Sansomit there so you can find it yourself. But here's the big thing. Here's the crux of the whole article. Oops, it's these last two slides. So trading Bitcoin based on whale behavior. So what they did. What if you wanted to trade Bitcoin based solely on the behavior of its whales? And I went over that, I'm like, that sounds good. We back tested a simple trading strategy using the on-chain activity of the largest Bitcoin addresses. Our strategy, one, fetch all addresses holding 100 plus Bitcoin. Two, review their trend over the last 35 days. Three, upward trend equals accumulation. Downward trend equals distribution. So if the trend slope is greater than 0.5, you got to buy. If it's less than 0.5, you're going to sell. And I thought, okay, this is a great sales pitch. Like I thought this was, a, I swear to God, I thought this was a sales pitch. And they're going to say, just sign up for a trading program for $99.95 a month. But here's what they said. The result of our whale strategy for the past two years are as follows. Number of executed trades, 18. Annualized returns, almost 20 percent so the whale strategy returns were plus 46 percent pretty good right pretty good but here's the benchmark which is the hodl just holding on being an investor returns were 61 percent so as expected trading only based on whale activity is less effective than simply holding bitcoin and it's what i've been saying the whole time on this channel look Everybody wants you to trade. Everybody wants you to leverage. Everybody wants you to do all these crazy things that just really just let you lose all your crypto. Just be an investor if it works out for you. I mean, I don't know what to tell you because I just accumulate. I just dollar cost average. And I've been preaching that since I started this channel. And people at the beginning were like, you're an idiot. You need to trade. You need to get over there and leverage everything and just do it. That might work for the 5% of you. Fantastic. But I don't know what's working for everybody. So if you haven't had that much luck with trading and uh, you're overextended, just 
take a step back, relax, and just dollar cost average. Meaning, instead of dumping $10,000 all at once in a polka dot, uh, why don't you just, you know, put a couple hundred bucks in uh, for yes for a couple days ago, then yesterday, maybe put another hundred bucks in, then today, put another hundred bucks in. And over time, it'll work itself out. Just hold on. That's all you got to do. Just hold on. And uh, I think everything should work out. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section. Uh, but that's the big thing. Uh, you want to beat some whales? Just hold them. Next up, is Polkadot on the brink of becoming the first Ethereum bridge? Good question. So this all comes down to a new bunch of developers called Snowfork. And it's not so much interesting about what they're going to do, but it's the timeline and speed and efficiency they're going to do it. That's what got me on this article. So Snowfork, a group of developers and designers have been working with Polkadot to help achieve their new level of interoperability between blockchains. And they say it will be delivered soon. So if you don't know, blockchain, we covered this a couple days ago, Ethereum Mafia and everything else. And uh, it's one of my new uh, holds. I, I buy a very little bit every day, like 25 bucks, uh, uh, and I get it out of Voyager. Yeah, I know. And uh, I mean, also, you can use Kraken. You can also use Binance. Um, but that's what I do. And the big thing is that it's by uh, Dr. Gavin Wood, who was one of the founders of Ethereum. And again, I believe in people. So when they're talking about interoperability and sharding and all these great things, I'm like, I believe in people. I'm going to go with that. And uh, they've got a lot of connections. And here's another thing they're doing. So Snowfork says, we're excited uh, to become a part of the Polkadot ecosystem. We're going to help improve interoperability within and across its ecosystem, the group proclaims. And this is how they're going to do it. They only need people who are going to use the, the, the blockchain. They only need to trust the protocols, mathematics, cryptography, code, and econ economics. With the goal of creating an all-purpose application, Snowfork explains that interoperability is about more than just token transfer. So I'm like, that sounds great. So how long is it going to take? Two years? Here's what's crazy. According to Snowfork, an all-encompassing product would include other kinds of assets, like non-fungible tokens, loan contracts, option future contracts, and generalized type agnostic asset transfers across chains, which is pretty great, interoperability across chains, would be valuable functionality. Phase one of Snowfork's three-step plan is ongoing and expected to be ready in mid-September of this year. Not next year, not 2022. This year, mid-September, coming up. And then this is where it gets just nuts. They expect phase three to be completed with a delivery of an all-encompassing, trustless, general-purpose product by March of 2021. So I'm putting that in my mental timeline. If they can hit that, that is amazing. Look at all the other different chains that are out there and how long it took them. These guys are saying we're going to do this. Now, granted, this is not Polkadot. They're just building on top of it. They're trying to help make it a little bit more interoperable. So uh, if they do that, fantastic. But uh, again, I see big things for Polkadot. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Last story. Next up, after recent pullback, the next stop for Ethereum is a new all-time high, says Weiss Rating. So uh, I'm very skeptical all right, on Weiss, but they did call this last one. So Weiss Crypto Ratings noted that ETH is poised to print new record highs emphasizing that traders remain overly bullish on the second largest cryptocurrency. And like I said in the beginning, I was on Alex Mascioli's show and uh, CJ from Micro Rebellion, he does a lot of TA, which I do not do. Uh, but he showed, what, what he did was he said, this is what the TA shows. Ethereum is going to uh, actually break through 400 and maybe even 500. And he talked about he was very bullish on it. So I'm like, great, I like that. And I like the fundamentals of what I believe in, which is everything's built on Ethereum and uh, DeFi is going crazy. So why not? Let's do this. So in a tweet on August 25th, US-based economic research agency Weiss Ratings postulated that Ethereum had been overheated and was essentially due for a pullback. So that exactly did happen. So after that pullback, Weiss is saying this, the cryptocurrency is now aiming for new heights now the correction was witnessed. So they're looking at TA, but there's also another, another side of this, which is the fundamentals. Despite ETH's price stalling in recent days, the DeFi sector has seen meteoric, gro meteoric growth. And this is according to DeFi Pulse, the total value locked in DeFi protocols recently skyrocketed past 7 billion with Aave or Aave uh, being the, uh, the big player. I think they had like over, yeah, it says right here. Ava is currently the largest DeFi protocol with one and a half billion in assets locked in. So here's my final thoughts. Everything's built on ETH and you need gas, you need ETH, you need, you need everything. It seems like an ETH is doing everything that it's supposed to do, right? Decentralized finance, smart contracts. And the problem that I saw was the uh, incredibly high transaction fees. But now that OMG is in there helping with all those costs, uh, I don't see any sh any reason why ETH shouldn't blast off to 500 
600, 700. I only see good things for Ethereum and it's why I have heavily invested into it. All right, that takes care of that. That's our last story. Let's jump in and do the Q and C of the day. All right, everybody, and welcome back to Q and C of the day. Welcome back to the office. So uh, these, this, this Q of the day is pretty interesting because it was just me that was tagged in actually a Twitter uh, response. And this all comes down to um, Voyager and Celsius. So uh, if you don't know, I'm a big believer in both of those, but I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, over the last, I don't know, about a month or so, uh, two to three weeks or so, it seems like the, the, the big issue has been customer service. I know what's going on. The, the thing that's going on is growing pains. As we start to really take off in this space in cryptocurrency digital assets, you're gonna see uh, more issues with customer service. And the exchanges, the wallets, and the brokerages that cannot keep up are going to wither away and die. Because if you are an investor and you are not appreciated and you're just kind of like swept to the side like some of the places have, uh, you're gone. So there is no reason to stick around. Remember, I, I tell this to everybody, I I'm gonna say this again. We do not work for the exchanges, the wallets, and uh, the brokerages. They work for us. So if you're not being appreciated, you go someplace else, and that's all you gotta really remember. So uh, what I saw a couple of days ago is what made me reaffirm my belief in the different place that I, I picked. So this is in Twitter, and this was a message that was addressed to me and to Voyager, and this is from Bruce, and Bruce said, hey, I tried to sign up and invest Voyager as recommended by News Asset, that is me, and that's my Twitter handle, couldn't connect to Capital One Bank. I emailed Invest Voyager, but have not received a response. And I sent out a tweet said, well, how long ago was that? Just trying to get some intel. He said it was five days ago, which is way too long. So I always say, you know, get, work the system. So send an email, let them uh, 24 to 40 hours to get back to you. And then hopefully they can give you the right response. But within a couple hours, this guy comes in uh, named Steve Ehrlich, the CEO of Voyager, right? And he says, hey, please send me a DM and the info and I'll make sure it gets taken care of. So first of all, I, I said, well, I said, thanks, Steve. But, but the big thing is that how many CEOs do that? How many CEOs of a major company jump in and say, you know what, send me the message and then I'll see what I can do to, to rectify this. And usually when the CEO uh, takes place and says, hey, uh, I'm gonna do something, and he tells his, you know, the staff to do something, usually, just saying, usually the staff gets and, you know, takes action. So. I do not see this being an issue too long for Bruce. Uh, I reached out to him, but he hasn't gotten back to me, so maybe everything worked out. But that's a, to me, that's amazing. You're not going to see like Brad Garlinghouse coming on like, hey, did you guys get scammed? Well, let me help you out. I'm, I don't think it's going to happen. Not that Brad's a bad guy. I don't really know him, but uh, sure. I mean, if you have a CEO coming in, I think that's pretty good customer service. So that was one thing. The second thing is this was actually uh, an email that I had gotten from Amateo. Amateo is one of the VP of operations or VP of marketing over there at um, uh, Voyager. And he just sent me this, I mean, he sends it to everybody. It's not like I'm special. He's like, hey, here's the, the interest rates uh, for this week or for September. USDC is at 9%, Bitcoin at six, <clears throat> ETH at four and a half. And I was like, great. So I put all my USDC into Voyager. So I'm gonna get 9% interest rate. Uh, that's way better than the bank. And I'd like to put over at Celsius, the problem is, is that uh, I live in Texas, and Texas is the only state where you cannot uh, get any kind of interest on a stable coin like USDC. Love Texas. I love Texas, but uh, sometimes, you know, what are you going to do? It just, ha it just happens like that. So I sent an email back. I said, hey, Mateo, just to let you know, uh, first of all, great interest rates. Second of all, uh, there's been some incidents come up uh, as far as with Voyager and I've had some complaints. Are you guys going through growing pains? Which is what I assume everybody's doing. And he pretty much confirmed, he's like, you know, he said, thanks to the feedback, we're definitely growing really fast, which I can definitely see. Uh, but we've also scaled up our customer support team significantly to handle all of the inbound requests. Uh, we're doing pretty well, but we, you know, we find it hard to please actually everyone. And I gotta tell you, that is true. I have multiple businesses that I've owned, and I can tell you to please everyone all the time uh, is a surefire way to blow your head off because <laughs> you will never do it. So you just have to, you know, get just aim for your best excellence and then move forward. So that's pretty much what's going on here. He says, you know what? Um, 
we did have an, a, a, a bug that's, that's affected a small number of customers, but we fixed it and we're moving forward. He goes, the customer sentiment is, is overall pretty high, but we're always looking for ways to do a better job. So please feel free to forward any information to me, any negative comments. So I'm like, great. You know, there's somebody who's, you know, looking out. So I said, yeah, you know what? There's, there's this thing that came up. Somebody had uh, used my referral link of Dan. They had put money in. They haven't received a referral link. And you look into it. And that's it. So again, I'm very happy with how things are going there. Also, if you do not get a response from places, you do not feel like, you know what? I don't feel like I'm being appreciated here. Go someplace else. That's it. Again, we don't work for the wallets, the exchanges. They work for us. Um, so that leads me to, to my next and final point, which is about Celsius. I love Celsius. Um, I believe in people. I believe in teams. I believe in Elon Musk for Tesla. I think he'll you know, make it go to great heights. I believe in Steve Jobs for Apple. I believe in Steven Ehrlich for um, Voyager. And I believe in Alex Mashinsky for Celsius. I think that guy's very dynamic. He created voice over internet protocol. He's always doing AMAs. He's, he's very accessible. He's been on a lot of YouTube shows. I think you should come on mine. What are you going to do? I, I, I got I to gotta actually reach out and do my due diligence and ask him. But um, this was, so what I'm trying to say is I believe in Celsius. So when I got this email, this is from Tiffany. She said, hey, I've had a problem with Celsius. I deposited 2,000 uh, Omisego or Omise, or OMG uh, in November 2019. And when the price went way high because they are helping out Ethereum with all their crazy fees, which was great, and OMG went up pretty well, she was she, she stood to gain about $4,000. And when she tried to cash out, it wouldn't allow it. So I said, well, what's going on? Did you reach out to customer service? She said, yes, it's been a couple days. But then she emailed me back and said, you know what? Here's what happened. Um, I was going to, what would she say it here? Oh, it was a number of coins issue. In the app, you need to input the number of coins manually. If you click max, you will get you will get the uh, message not enough fund. So what she had to do was instead of putting the 2089.457018 of OMG that she owned, she went ahead and put in 2089.457 and left it at that. And it was just a little bit enough to actually go through. So this is a glitch in the system. So if you have that issue with Celsius, now you know what to do. But I need to let Celsius know. I need to let Celsius know this is what's going on and uh, because they're glitches and they need to know. So again, the same thing holds true with Alex. Alex, if you're listening or watching, probably. Uh, come on the show and then uh, tell us about customer service and what's going on. But uh, I got to tell you, one thing is I believe in that guy and that's why I use Celsius. Um, there's other exchanges that they talk a good game, but the people behind it, I don't really know them. I don't really know what they're doing, and uh, they're not doing the things that I see uh, these guys are doing to delight their customers, as Warren Buffett says. A little Warren Buffett for the day. All right, so that's it for the, the Q of the day. Um, now we're going to go into the C of the day. C of the day is for the correction of the day. If you watched yesterday's video, I had cor did a correction. Uh, there was two screw-ups I did, so I just tell you, hey, uh, I'm not perfect, and uh, <laughs> if I don't know it, I, I don't know it, and I'll tell you I don't know it, um, or if I screw up. So, but uh, yesterday, uh, surprise, surprise, we did no screw up, which is amazing. So that's a good thing, but we will continue to do the Q and C of the day. I'm sure there's probably something that needs to be corrected in this video. Maybe yesterday was just a fluke. So if you see something, if you see something, say something. No, if you see something, put it in the comment section and I will talk about that in tomorrow's video, which will be Saturday. All right, uh, so that's it. Let's uh, jump back, huh? All right, I hope that answered everybody's question and uh, thank God no corrections to do. But uh, here's what we got. Um, if you don't know, there's a join now button underneath on the bottom right. You don't get anything special. Uh, it's just like a tip, buck 99. And what I do is just do random shout outs. So for all, for everybody who's uh, signed up, just let me say, hey, Jorge Alba, uh, Modern Samurai. That guy's funny. He's always making fun of my uh, pink shirt. Right. Salmon, that's right, Salmon. Eric might go. Uh, Amuse Web Design, uh, Albert Allery, and Igor Pusin. So thanks so much for joining up. Really appreciate it. If you like those types of videos, there's going to be two more going to pop up on your left and right. Not sure. YouTube controls all that stuff. And uh, that is it. So check those out. Um, they also control the ads. So if, if you saw a scam ad, uh, report that. And then uh, say hi to YouTube because they'd love to hear from you if you got a problem with that, with uh, scam ads like I do. All right, that's it. Thanks so much. See you on the next one.